And when he uttered those words, I can imagine the wind and the waves saying, wait. We, we know that voice. That's the one whose words brought us into existence and gave us our purpose. And the wind hushed in reverence. And the waves laid prostrate at the feet of their creator. Welkom bij Antwoorden met Bela Scanley. Het leven kan soms een uitdaging zijn. Maar of het nu gaat om financiën, relaties, gezondheid of de vraag naar je doel in je leven. één ding is zeker. God ziet je. Hij houdt van je. En wat er ook aan de hand is, hij heeft de antwoorden op je vragen. Hello friend, I'm Bayless Connolly and I want to welcome you to the broadcast today. We've got something I believe is very, very important that we're going to be sharing with you today because it relates to every single person. I can relate to it. You will be able to relate to it. It's something that we all experience, something that we all go through, and there's good news in it. God wants to help us. We're going to be talking about storms, the storms of life, and the good news is God is greater than the storm. You know, there's a story told in Acts chapter 27 where Paul is on a ship and there's like 275, 276 other people on board and they get caught up in this horrific storm and the storm just drives them. And the Bible says that it was so bad that they didn't see the sun or the stars for many, many days and all hope that they should be saved was given up. Literally several weeks caught in this storm and they didn't think they're going to make it. Paul is praying, and an angel visited him and told him, God has granted you your life plus the lives of all those that are on board. And Paul got everyone together on the ship there and said, listen, an angel of the God to whom I belong and whom I serve has told me that he's granted me my life and the lives of everyone on board. He said, so take courage, be of good heart, for I believe God that it will be just as it was told me. And everyone else was encouraged by his words, and they were shipwrecked on an island, but no one died. God saved them all. And I know you might be thinking, I've thought it too, well, if I had an angel come and tell me it was going to be okay, well, then maybe I'd, I'd relax a little bit too. You know, Peter, in, in talking about his experience on the Mount of Transfiguration, he writes about it, and he says, look, we saw the glory of God. We audibly heard the voice of God. He said, but we have a more sure word of prophecy, speaking about the scriptures. He said, the scriptures are more sure than hearing the audible voice of God, more sure than visibly seeing the glory of God. His word is more sure. And hey, great if an angel comes and talks to you, but you've got the Bible, you've got God's promises. And I just want to encourage you, they, 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 they will keep you afloat. They will get you through the storm. Sometimes God delivers us immediately from the storm. Sometimes, like in Acts 27 with Paul and his companions and all those on the ship, there was a process. God gets us through the storm. Now, I always like it when he instantly delivered us, but sometimes there is a process that takes place. But if we will cling to God and cling to his word, he will get us through. And I know there are people watching me right now. You may be in a horrific storm. It may be with your family. Maybe you're distraught concerning your children. Listen, God knows. God cares. You may be in a terrific financial storm right now. It seems like your little ship is going down and there's no hope. God knows. God cares. It may be with your health. The doctors have given you a diagnosis that has gone beyond frightening you. you you've kind of lost hope. You know, everything seems to just have, have somehow leaked out of you and you're in a place of despair right now. Listen, God knows and he cares. And here's the good news. Whatever your storm is, he doesn't just know. He doesn't just care. He has the power to help you and he wants to. So I encourage you with all of your heart, listen to what we're about to share as we go into this message, talking about the fact that God is mightier in the storm than the storm. And it's not a coincidence you're watching me right now. Let us together go to God's word, find out how he can rescue us. So if you got a Bible, why don't you grab it? We're going to be reading from the book of Psalms. And then in a few minutes, we're going to be reading out of Matthew chapter 8. And this 
is something that really has seized me as I've been thinking about it and, and fellowshipping with the Lord. And Psalm 93, verses 3 and then verse 4, it says this, The floods have lifted up, O Lord. The floods have lifted up their voice. The floods lift up their waves. A flood is something that threatens to overwhelm you and to destroy you. And here he didn't just talk about a flood. He says, the floods, plural, have lifted up, O Lord. The floods have lifted up. And sometimes it can seem like there's a myriad of floods coming at us at one time. A, a flood of, of financial difficulties, a, a flood of uh, emotional ups and downs, a flood dealing with our health a flood dealing with one of our kids or some family issues. And I know there'd be some people watching me right now. You literally feel like you're treading water and your head is just barely above water and the flood waters just keep rising and rising. The waves keep crashing. Well, you know what? The psalmist didn't stop there, didn't stop talking about the floods, plural, or even the fact that the floods have a voice. Do you notice he said the floods have lifted up their voice? And their voice says, you're going to go down. You'll never recover. No one cares. You're alone. And your future only holds pain and darkness. But then God says this in the next verse. The Lord on high is mightier than the noise of many waters, than the mighty waves of the sea. My friend, the Lord is mightier than the floods. He's mightier than the noise that the floods and the waves make. The scripture says this in Psalm 89, verses 8 and 9. O Lord God of hosts, who is mighty like you, O Lord? Your faithfulness also surrounds you. You rule the raging of the sea. When its waves rise, you still them. Now, I want to read something else from the book of Psalms here, from Psalm 107, and it's, it's kind of been one of my favorite psalms throughout the years. God has spoken to me through it a number of times, and it, it actually depicts people in different kinds of trouble. It talks about people that are lost, that don't know which way to go. It talks about people lacking the necessary resources to survive. People in captivity and bondage to the enemy. It speaks about people that are alone. It speaks about people that are sick. People that are literally at the gates of death. And in every one of those situations, God, God steps in and he delivers them. But in every situation, there is one thing that we find in common and we read it over and over and over throughout the psalm. It begins in verse 6. It says, Then they cried out to the Lord, in their trouble, and he delivered them out of their distresses. They cried out to the Lord in their trouble, and he delivered them. And then he goes on in verse 13, he says it again, then they cried out to the Lord, and he delivered them. Verse 19, then they cried out to the Lord in their trouble, he delivered them. Verse 28, then they cried out to the Lord, and he delivered them. They cried out, they cried out, they cried out. And one of these groups of people in trouble Around verse 23, it talks about people that are in a ship on the sea and they're caught in a terrific storm. It goes down to verse 26. It says, they mount up to the heavens. They go down again to the depths. Their soul melts because of trouble. They reel to and fro and stagger like a drunken man and are at their wits end. Now, I don't know if you've ever been on a boat in stormy seas, but I have been and it is not fun. And I understand going up to the heavens and then going down to the depths and the boat is rocking this way and that way, especially if you have confused seas. And it's very hard to get your footing and that's what it's talking about. They stagger about like a drunken person and some of you feel like, you know, I just, I just can't get my footing. I can't get my, my footing financially. I, I can't get my footing emotionally. It just seems like nothing is solid underneath me. And then he says they're at their wits end. In other words, they can't figure out what to do in their own ability and through their own reasoning powers. They're at a dead end. They can't go any further. And that may describe you right now. You don't know what you're going to do. 
What are you going to do next week, next month? Where are the resources going to come from? How how are you going to recover from this? Well, friend, we've all been there. And he goes on in verse 28, and he says, Then they cry out to the Lord in their trouble, and he brings them out of their distresses. He calms the storm so that its waves are still. Then they are glad because they're quiet. So he guides them to their desired haven. My friend, what's your desired haven right now? Is it peace? Is it having your needs met? Is it it health? Is it an intact family? He guides them to their desired haven. Actually, three things happen here. Number one, they cry out to the Lord in their trouble. Number two, they're quiet. Number three, he guides them. They cry out, they're quiet, God guides them. Some of you may recall me sharing this this story, but many years ago when I was a relatively new Christian, I was with some friends up in Klamath Falls, Oregon, and we were driving down to Ashland. There was a mountain road that connects the two, and it was, was, uh, you just wouldn't meet a lot of cars on the road, at least back then. We're talking mid-1970s, and uh, we were coming down. It's the middle of winter. And I had an old 1963, you know, Volkswagen microbus. It had a, a giant 36 horsepower engine in it. The thing was air cooled. And when you went up the hill, you had to grit your teeth and lean forward. Otherwise, it wouldn't make it up to the top of the hill. But we're driving down. There's snow piled up everywhere. And I don't know why, but we decided to turn off on this sort of little side road. And so we started going on this this little mountain track that went off the main two-lane road. And there was a lot of snow, and my van is slipping here and slipping there, and then we come to a patch when there would just be dirt, and we just drove a mile, drove a second mile. I don't know what we were thinking. It was really pretty foolish, dead of winter. And then I ended up getting stuck in the snow several miles back in this desolate track. And I'm, I'm running the engine and trying to get it out and rocking the thing, and all of a sudden the engine starts to smoke. I go to the back and I lift up the hatch and, and the fan belt is gone. Now that's not a good thing on an air-cooled engine. You need your fan belt. And, you know, the, the, I searched high and low in that compartment. I thought the thing must have just broken and, and been spit out because there were some areas where it was actually open to the outside. It wasn't completely enclosed. And I looked around that little engine compartment for about 10 minutes. It wasn't there. I looked all around in the snow. Maybe it had spit it out somewhere, though I didn't know what I was going to do with a, a broken fan belt. But I searched for another 10 minutes out in the snow and nothing. And we're stuck. And it's getting later in the day. We got a couple hours till sunset. And I'm thinking, what are we going to do? Now, I know we're not going to die But it is going to get down around freezing, and it's just not going to be a happy night. And then we'll have to wait till the morning and then walk out in daylight. And I thought, this is going to be one of those miserable nights of my life. And the other people, they were outside of the van there, just kind of, what are we going to do? And I'll never forget it. I sat down in the driver's seat of my van, and I had a big old family Bible that I'd gotten somewhere and I think I used to scare people. I'd carry that thing around and they would run. But I, I just set it down and I sort of opened it up. It just And it fell open to Psalm 107. I just thought I'm going to read it. So I read through every verse in Psalm 107. Man, they were in trouble. They cried out to the Lord in their, their trouble and he saved them out of their distresses. They cried out to the Lord. They cried out to the Lord. And I read all of these things and I, I read those verses that we just read. You know, they're... they're they're staggering. They, they, they can't seem to get their footing. They're at their wits end. They don't know what to do, but they cry out to the Lord and he delivers them, and brings them to their desired haven. And I'll never forget it. I put my head down on the steering wheel and I prayed. I said, God, you helped all these people when they cried out to you and I'm in trouble right now. And I just cry out to you. I ask you to help me. And you know, an amazing thing happened Suddenly a quiet came over my heart. The agitation just left, and it was quiet. And I heard the Holy Spirit whisper to me, go back and look in the engine compartment. I thought, 
I don't know why, but I got out of the van, went back, I opened up the engine compartment, and the fan belt was sitting there. It was not there before. And I, just, I was amazed, and I actually figured out how to put the thing back on. I'm not super mechanical, but I got the fan belt on, but we're still stuck. But then about 10 minutes later, we hear a noise, and here comes a, a four-wheel drive truck down that same track from the same direction we'd come. And I think there was three guys in the truck, and it's a good thing they were driving because they were so drunk, they couldn't walk. And they pull up, hey, what's going on? I said, man, we're stuck. Can you, you pull us out? Yeah. And they you know, grabbed a rope out of the back. We hooked up the van, and they pulled us out. And I remember I said to the guy, I said, you know what? You may not realize it, but you're an answer to prayer. I said, we were praying. I was praying, and God sent you as the answer. And his response was like I had hit him in the face with a wet mackerel. And I bet he's never forgotten that. And they drove off hooping and hollering and laughing, and we were able to get to our desired haven. Cry out to him and then take time to get quiet, and God will guide you. Cry out, get quiet, listen for his guidance. And then we come to another story, another storm. Here in Matthew chapter 8, verse 23, it says, speaking about Jesus and the disciples, now, when he got into a boat, his disciples followed him. And suddenly a great tempest arose on the sea, so that the boat was covered with the waves, but he was asleep. Then his disciples came to him and awoke him, saying, Lord, save us. We are perishing. Now, the first thing that stands out to me about this, Jesus went into the boat, and they followed him. Following Jesus does not exempt us from troubles. The believer is not immune to trouble or to trials. And you know, just like in this story, some troubles are not only unexpected, they are sudden. That this, this tempest suddenly came upon them. It might be a sudden diagnosis, a sudden problem with the child, loss of a job, or suddenly the church is not allowed to meet together. Some things, not just unexpected, but they happen suddenly. And, and what's Jesus doing? He's asleep. He is asleep. Now, the, these guys, some of the guys on that boat, they were seasoned fishermen, and they believed their lives were in jeopardy. That was no small storm. They thought they were about to die. But Jesus was unmoved by the storm. He was not agitated. He was not stressed out. He was not even concerned, not in the slightest. And my friend, he's not up in heaven right now, nervously wringing his hands. I remember a friend called me one day and brought up a subject that we had talked about before. It was one of his children that was just, acting crazy, doing stupid things, getting in trouble. And my friend was so stressed out over it and so depressed. And I still remember I was standing by the garage outside of the house, talking to him on the phone. I said, listen, I'm going to tell you something, and you need, you need to hear me. This is going to sound like a cliche, but it's not. I said, this situation with your son has not taken God by Surprise, and he's got it covered. Brought peace to my friend. He said, Bayless, you're right. In fact, I was talking to him just yesterday, and that took place probably 17 years ago, and he referenced that moment again as we were on the phone yesterday, just thinking back, yes, this hasn't taken God by surprise. He's got this thing covered. You know, the Lord is not worried in the slightest about the present global dilemma. He took care of those that followed him into the boat, and he takes care of his followers today. It goes on in verse 26, but he said to them, Why are you fearful, O you of little faith? Then he arose and rebuked the winds and the sea, and there was a great calm. 
So the men marveled, saying, Who can this be that even the winds and the sea obey him? And when it says that Jesus rebuked the wind and the sea, it, it literally means an authoritative command. And in Mark's account of this, he actually tells us the words that Jesus used to speak to the wind and to the waves. He said, Peace, be still. And when he uttered those words, I can imagine the wind and the waves saying, wait, we, we know that voice. That's the one whose words brought us into existence and gave us our purpose. And the wind hushed in reverence and the waves laid prostrate at the feet of their creator. My friend, the Lord has not lost any of his power. He's still holding all things together by the word of his power and all of creation still bows before him. Now, when Jesus spoke to the winds and the waves and they hushed and laid down, it says there was a great calm, not a little calm, a great calm. And the disciples said, who can this be? Who is this that even the winds and the sea obey him? Well, friend, maybe you're in a storm right now like the disciples in this boat. Here's my question. Who's in the boat with you? It's Jesus. He's not out of reach beyond the stars somewhere. My friend, by his spirit, he has taken up residence in us. He lives in me. He lives in you. We are the temple of the Holy Spirit. He is committed. He is all in. He's in our boat. He's in our life. And we would do well to remember who he is and what he can do. He still quiets storms and he can quiet the heart of his child in the middle of a storm. My friend, he is there with you. If you've opened up your heart to him and you've reached out to him, you need to acknowledge him. Acknowledge him in the middle of the storm. And if he's not in your life, I just want to encourage you. Open your heart to Jesus. It is not a coincidence you're listening to my voice right now. It's not, you know, some freak thing that happened that you just walked by the television set and, and this suddenly caught your attention. God is reaching out to you, my friend. He wants a relationship with you. And he sent his son Jesus to die on the cross for your sins, to settle your accounts. And heaven holds nothing against you. Jesus paid your debt in full as he hung upon Calvary's tree. He was judged in your place. And on the third day, once the claims of God's eternal justice were forever satisfied, Jesus, by the power of the Holy Spirit, was raised from the dead. And the scripture says, if you believe that, and if you confess him with your mouth as Lord, that God will bring you into a relationship with himself. That relationship is called salvation. It's what your heart cries out for. You'll not fill that empty place in your heart by getting another man or another woman in your life. You're not going to fill it up by drinking another bottle of wine. You're not going to fill it up with the latest drug. You're not going to fill it up with an extreme sport. You won't fill it up with a religious ritual or good works. You can't fill it up by possessing more things. It's a God-shaped hole. can only be filled through a relationship with Jesus Christ. My friend, he's reaching out to you right now. Why not pray with me? Maybe just put a hand on your heart and say, Jesus, come into my life. I believe in you. I believe you're God's son, that you died for my sins, and you were raised from the dead. Be my Lord and be my Savior. Amen. God bless you. Well, my friend, I hope that you prayed that prayer with me. And if you did, and you did it from a sincere heart, God heard you. And that is the most important issue in life, is getting ourselves right with God, getting Jesus in our boat, so to speak, and then he will go with us through the storms of life. You know, if I could sit down in your kitchen or come into your home and sit at your coffee table and, and enjoy a cup of tea with you and talk about the scriptures, talk about what's going on in your life, I would love to do that. But you know, this is the next best thing. So why don't you just 
let your heart agree with mine and let me pray for you. Heavenly Father, I pray for my friend that's watching me right now, whose heart is turned toward you. I ask you to help them. I pray that you would let them know that you are present there with them and that you are for them, oh God. I pray that they would be encouraged in their hearts and whatever they're facing right now, I pray that by your Holy Spirit, you would help them get through it to the other side, help them get through it to victory. I ask you to bless my friend in Jesus' name. I would also just like to take a moment and say thank you to those of you that support the broadcast financially. We could not do what we do without your partnership. So God bless you as you continue to pray and as you continue to give. Heb je vragen over de uitzending of houd je iets bezig waarvoor we kunnen bidden? Schrijf ons dan of bel ons op. Ons team is er voor je. Wil je meer weten en op de hoogte blijven van Antwoorden met Belis Kandi? Meld je dan aan voor de gratis maandbrief van Belis per e-mail of per post. God zegen.